Come on, let's give God a big shout of praise this morning. For he is good, his mercy endures forever. Oh, that song really blessed me. Because how many know the enemy will try to lie to us? And that's part of the message today. We're going to be talking about deception. Be careful to not be deceived. Be careful to not be deceived. Just going off this song, a lot of times, which I don't want to get ahead of myself, but a lot of times the enemy will put a thought in us that things are not going to turn around. Things are not going to get better. But I, we declare right now that God has the final say-so. His word has the final say-so. How many believe in trusting God's word? Once he says it, it is done. Father, we thank you. We worship you. Man, I'm so blessed by that song and just the whole worship set. I can't wait for September 19th because, Father, we're in a place of worship right now. And, Father, let us stay in that place of worship as we get ready to receive your word. Speak to us today. Even as we go home, let us stay in that place of worship. Even though we're going through tough times, we're going through difficult times, we could stay in that place of worship knowing that once you say it, God, it is done. It is finished. I lift up all those right now that may be sick. There's people watching us from the hospital. We pray for healing in the name of Jesus. If Jesus said it, he will do it. We declare healing right now. I just got some disturbing news really quick. Family, if we can, let's pray. Um, Rose and um, Ron Gearhart, you guys know Rose and Ron, right? Um, their daughter just got shot six times. I don't know if it's last night. I don't, I don't have all the details. I ran back after 9 o'clock service. My phone was blowing up. I prayed for Ron. They're at, they're, they're at the hospital right now. And not only his daughter, his, uh, their grandson got shot. Um, his daughter got shot six times. They're, she's in surgery right now as we speak. Can we pray for Ron's daughter? Julie, begin to pray right now. Her name is, her name is Julie. Um, the grandson's name is Deshaun. Pray for Julie and Deshaun. Julie is under, uh, undergoing surgery right now. Father, we lift up the Gearhart family right now. That you would strengthen them. You would comfort them. We pray for Julie right now, God, that you would be with the doctors, the surgeons, the nurses, every physician that's there. You'd give them wisdom. Father God, the, the surgery will go well. They'll be a great recovery. We speak healing in Julie's body. We speak healing right now in Deshaun's body. Be with Rose and Ron right now. Give them strength and peace. Give them comfort, Lord, right now. The whole family, give them peace and give them comfort. Father, we thank you, Lord. And anybody else that's hurting right now, God, we, we pray for healing and comfort today. That's why we come to your house, Lord, to get encouraged. And Father, God, for you to heal our hearts and for you to begin to turn situations around. For you to change the way we think about things. We need, a, we need a change of thinking, God. That's why we come to the house. We come to the house to worship you. We come to this house to magnify you. The King of kings and Lord of lords, let your presence reign on the Gearheart family right now as they're going through this tough time right now this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone shout. Tell your neighbor you look good this morning. I'm so happy you made it to the house of God. Tell your neighbor you look good today. I've gave you some punchlines you could tell them and say, hey, looks like you lost a few pounds. Tell them you look good. You look good, but continue to pray for our families at Gearheart and so many families going through some things. And, but how many know God, God is good even in the tough times? Can I get an amen? God is good. He's good even in the tough times, and I hope you're encouraged today. When you leave today, you leave encouraged. Now, for the ones that I haven't met, my name is Pastor Robert. I'm the associate pastor. Pastor Marco, which is our senior pastor, he's my brother. He's even on vacation. He's coming back tomorrow. Maybe Pastor Marco's watching right now. Can you give our senior pastor, Lisa, give him a big clap. Say, we miss you. We love you. Yeah, they'll be flying back tomorrow from Puerto Rico, and they're so excited to be back. Next Sunday, he'll be ministering. Um, Wednesday, we're in a series right now, um, How to Be Salty. Christian just tore it up last week. How many were here last week for the word, last Wednesday? Man, if, if you haven't tuned in, you want to jump on the app, get caught up. So when you show up Wednesday, you kind of know what we're talking about. But we're going through the book of Matthew. It's been great. But on Sundays now, we're going through the book of James. So if you have your Bibles, go to the book of James. Um, we've, we've learned so much in these last, I think it's been maybe four or five weeks since we've started the book of James. Uh, Pastor Marco kicked it off with James chapter 1 verse 1, and this is a letter from James, a slave of God. You know, we learned how to really surrender our whole life to God in that week. There's no hold barred. You got to give everything to Jesus. 
Um, James um, chapter 1 verse 2, we learn about troubling times. Pastor Marco said it about four or five weeks ago. There's really three groups of people. One, you're in a trial right now. How many are in a trial? Okay. Second group, you just got out of a trial. How many were that? You just got out of a major trial. Or number three, get ready, you're about to enter another trial. Look at your neighbor and say, watch out, you got another trial coming. You won't hear that in church too much. That's life. Some will say that's life. Until we get to heaven, this is a fallen world. This is a very fallen world, and that's why our hope is not here in this world. Our hope is based on the Word. Our hope is in the kingdom. Our hope is in Jesus. So we learned about trouble in times. We learned um, in verse 5 that God wants to give us wisdom. How many has been asking for wisdom these last few weeks? We learned about that. Pastor Joe, we, oh, we talked about our source, that God is our source. We learned about last week, Pastor Joe, how to overcome temptation. How many were tempted this week on a few things? How many passed? Anybody pass? Glory be to God. We're learning. Right? We learned how to overcome temptation. Now this week, I want to go down to verse 16. So if you have your Bibles, go down to James 1.16. I'm only going to read really one scripture from James because the Holy Spirit told me, you got to park here for a second. You got to, you got to, you got to, you got to go here. James 1, 16, this is how it reads. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Let me read it in the message version. James 1, 16 in the message says this. So my dear friends... Don't get thrown off course. Right now, the enemy is doing everything he can to throw us off course. But I'm letting the devil know, you're not throwing me off course. I'm staying close to God. So James, and we're talking about trials, we're talking about tribulations. This scripture will go on the next verse. Every good gift comes from God. Don't get deceived. Now, who's James talking to? He's talking to the new believers, the, the Jewish people that are getting saved. They're leaving everything to follow God. They're going through tough times. He warns them, look, you're going to go through tough times. You're going to go through very difficult times, but that's where you're going to grow. That's where you're going to get endurance. Now he's saying, now, be careful. There's an enemy that's trying to deceive you. I wonder, let me ask you a question. Could we be deceived? And maybe not even know it? Can we be headed down a path we think that's right, but you're about to go off a cliff? Could some of us be thinking, could there be churchgoers thinking they're going to heaven, but they're not even close? Could it be possible that you and I, me as a pastor, me as a leader, could be deceived? The answer is yes. The Bible says this in um, Proverbs 14, 12. There is a path before each person that seems right. How many of ever thought they were on the right path and, and you, you figured out this is bad? How many, come on, how many ever been in a relationship? You thought you were dating Casanova. They turn out to be Lucifer times infinity. Right? You th we think we're headed down the right path. Well, things are going great. Are they going great? Where are you headed? Just because we're in a church, it doesn't make us a real Christian. Comedian said this, because you're in a, in a garage, don't make you a car. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. That was good. That's, yeah, that was good. Yeah. I didn't say that. Someone else said that. Could it? Could you be on a path? There's a path that each person is, seems, seems like it's right, but it ends in death. It ends in destruction. So James is saying, don't fall for deception. Be careful. The title is this, be careful, don't be deceived. Tell your neighbor, be careful. Tell him, be careful. The devil might try to deceive you. Be careful. Tell your neighbor, open up your eyes. Could it be possible? Yeah, the very elect, the Bible says in the last days, are going to, some of them will fall away from the truth. The Bible warns us in Matthew 24, 24, for false Christs and false prophets will rise 
and they'll show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 gives us another warning. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The rapture, the coming of Jesus. For that day will come not unless the fallen away comes first. Hey, if you think you can't be deceived, you got a whole nother thing coming. Because the angels that were in heaven got deceived by Lucifer. Every time I think about that, I go a little bit crazy. How did Lucifer deceive one third of the angels? You know why? Lucifer is a master deceptor. How do we know that? Most people are deceived and they don't even know it. Christians, let's talk about Christians. Can, can Christians be deceived? I, I mean, can I read you some stats about some people that go to church? Can I read it to you? It's going to scare you. It's going to mess you up. But you, you can handle it? Okay, you told me you can handle it. Babe, they told me they can handle it. All right. 7.8 billion people are on earth right now. All right, give or take. People die. People are born. If we had the roll meter, it goes up and down. People are born, people die. Every three seconds, somebody dies. And another baby is being born. There's only 2.5 billion, which is amazing. 2.5 billion are Christians. Give it up for the Christians. Right? That's good. I'm not good at math, but if I do the math, that leaves 5.3 billion uh, deceived. Now there's babies in there and kids, so you got to take them out of the factor. Let's look at this. Let's look at some stats now. 70% of Americans believe in heaven. So right off the bat, 30% of Americans are under a spirit of deception. They don't even know it. 30% of Americans are under a spirit of deception. 50%, look at this, out of that 70, right? 50% out of the 70 believe that you get to heaven by good deeds. Deceived. I'm not saved on my good works. I'm saved in grace. I'm saved by grace. I'm saved what Jesus did on the cross. How many are thankful you're not saved by your good deeds? Well, glory be to God, half of us would be going to hell right now. Thank God I'm not going to go to heaven. He's going to pull on my rap sheet. You did this, you did that, you did this, you did this, you did that, you did this, you did this, you did that. Okay, that's the bad. Let's take, it to, let's take a look at the good. You did this, you did that, you did this. Oh, man. You got more bad than good. Oh, my gosh. Man, you should have did, did six more good things before you died. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Go to hell now. <laughs> I might be the first one going to hell. Because you know why? It's not based on works. It's based on what Jesus did on Calvary. How many are thankful it's not based on works? How many used to be crazy back in the days? Thank God it ain't based on works, huh? So 50% out of the 70 believe that you go to heaven because they're highly, highly deceived. Let's continue some stats. They get, get, they get scarier. 40% of Christians, churchgoers in America, forget about the world, we're just talking about America right now. 40% of Christians believe there's more than one way to get to heaven. They believe other religions and other gods, as long as you're good, you can still get to heaven. Deceived. Look at this one. A majority of Christians, 57%. Now, this is a survey they did in 2020. This is, this is as recent as we can get. They did a survey. They called all these Christians. A majority of Christians, 57%. Say that sex between unmarried adults in a committed relationship is sometimes or always acceptable. So as long as you're having sex outside of marriage, but long as you're committed. You want to marry this person? Yeah, we're gonna get married, okay. You sure you want? Okay, you could go ahead, you could go ahead and have sex now. Over half of Christians believe that. They're deceived. James is saying, be careful that we don't fall under the spirit of deception. It's dangerous. Look at this one. Four out of ten Christians, 40%, random calling Christians, 
strongly agree that Satan is not a real person at all. He's just a symbol or a metaphor of evil in the Bible. Don't believe in um, the Holy Spirit. 38% of Christians do not believe that the Holy Spirit is a living person. Again, he's a symbol like the devil. He's just a symbol that's in the Bible that just relates to power. 55% of Christians agree that the, that the Bible is 100% accurate. 55% of Christians, what is going on with the body of Christ? I'll tell you, they're being deceived. So James is warning us, alert, alert. Make sure you're not deceived. Can me as a pastor, can I be deceived? Yep, just like you. Yep, just like you, if I'm not alert. And, and the, the devil is very cunning. He's very slick. Because we can be deceived in one little area, but everything else is going great. And we think we're on that right path, but we're headed towards a serious cliff. Today, we are breaking the spirit of deception in the name of Jesus. We're breaking the strongholds of the devil this morning. How many want to be set free with the power of God? Yeah, the enemy is slick. Watch out. Watch out for all kinds of sideshow distractions right now. There's so many sideshow. I love the, can I, I love the scripture. Proverbs 25, 27, in the message version, it says this. Because this is a season right now. We got to stay focused. We have to stay alert. Don't get involved in foolish arguments. Why these were mass? No mass. <laughs> Stop the foolish. Somebody wants to wear a mask? Wear a mask? That's good. Right? But we're getting involved in all these different things. Be careful. Stay on mission. Don't get sidetracked right now. Because what's the mission? The mission is this. Save souls and make disciples. What's our mission as believers? Proverbs 25, 27 in the message says this. Keep your eyes, man, straight ahead. Ignore all sideshow distractions. This is in the word, in the message. Watch your step, and the road will stretch out smooth before you. Look neither to the right or to the left. Leave evil in the dust. Don't allow any distractions in this season we're living in. Our mission is very clear. In the book of Matthew 419, Jesus is calling his disciples. He made the mission very clear. Matthew 419, Jesus called them. Come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. Matthew 28, 19, therefore go make disciples. It's saving souls and making disciples. But the enemy will deceive us and get involved in all these sideshow distractions and take us off the mission. Deception will creep in even when you're going through a tough time. Because going through a tough time and trying to stay on mission, how many know it's difficult? When you lose a loved one, trying to stay on track when you lose a loved one, man, it's difficult. Spirit of grief will try to settle in. I give it up to my dad. I gotta get, every time my dad is winning souls, I got to give my dad props. Can you pull up my dad? He was in Mexico this weekend with our adopt block TJ team. Pull that up. I love this. I love this. Pull up my pops. There he goes. Man, he's been going through the hardest time of his life. He calls me. He just cries. He misses my mama just like me. I miss her every day. Sometimes me and Pastor Marco are just talking. Oh, I miss her so much. Why can't she be here? I miss her. He calls me crying. Look at him. Yo soy el uno, buscando el uno. <laughs> because even when my father, we lost our mother, lost his wife. They were married for over 40 years. In that hard time, in that difficult time, the enemy will try to distract us and deceive us and to get off mission. But God is, I know you're going through a tough time, but stay on mission. Save souls and make disciples. Stay on mission. Save souls and make disciples. Because deception will come in those dark times. Deception will creep in in those dark times. I was at the, I went to go visit someone in the hospital, one of our members, and um, they were on their way to church. 
last Sunday, on the way to church last Sunday, as we're ministering, as Pastor Joe was ministering, she walks into her bathroom and her 21-year-old son is laying on the floor convulsing. She calls 911, I don't know what's going on. Long story short, he had a brain aneurysm that caused a stroke. And they said, Pastor, you got to get down here fast. Someone's got, I just need some backup. I need some encouragement because the enemy is trying to put things in my head. I don't know what's going on. Why is this happening to my son? And I want you to write this down as I continue this story. Write this down. How does the enemy deceive us? How does he trick us? How does he deceive us? Number one, he'll get us to believe the lie. He'll get us to believe a lie. My marriage will never turn around. I could never get healed. I can't get employed. I don't have the education. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. Whatever it is, the devil will drop a little seed of a lie. So when I talked to this lady, I said, okay, the enemy's trying to deceive you. And she said, Pastor, what he's really trying to do, he's making me feel guilty right now that this is my fault. I said, sweetie, where are you getting that thought from? She goes, well, I've seen some signs of him not acting right. And I waited too long. I said, I bind that lie in the name of Jesus. That's a lie that comes from the pit of hell. This has nothing to do with you as a mother. This is the enemy trying to put a lie. The enemy will deceive us by just dropping and getting us to believe a lie. So I said, honey, you got to change the atmosphere. Pop some worship in. Blast the music. I don't care if you got people sleeping next to you. Blast worship as loud as you can because the enemy's trying to infiltrate. He's trying to bring deceit that this situation is not going to turn around. It's going to get worse. And why, why did God do this? And if he's a loving God, why did he allow this with my son? So I finally got to the hospital. And man, to get into a hospital now, good luck. You got to fight your way into a hospital now. I fought my way into the hospital. I went to the room. She goes, who are you? I saw Pastor Robert. Oh my gosh, Pastor Robert. Oh my gosh. And when I walked in, she had a cell phone on top of her son's body, blasting worship. <laughs> and she went to go turn it off. I said, no, let's just worship for a second. You got it. You got it, man. We worship God. We had, a wor we, had, we had a worship set here. We had a worship at Arrowhead Hospital a few days ago, worshiping the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And what she was doing was tearing down the lies that the enemy was trying to bring her. Son's not going to make it. It keeps on getting worse. He said, Robert, they're coming in every 20 minutes with bad news. And the only thing that I have is the word of God. I said, that's not the only thing. That's the best thing you got because the word won't let you down. How does the enemy deceive us? He gets us to believe the lie. John 8, 44. He was a murderer from the beginning. He's always hated the truth because there's no truth in him. When he lies, so who's, who's this talking about? Satan. When he lies, it's consistent with his character. For he is a liar and he's a father of all lies. I want to I show you something. Let me see. If you could blast my mic. Let's see if this works and I'll explain this. Let me see. Let me see if I could play this. Can you guys blast my mic? Let me see if this comes up and I'll, let me see if it comes up. Wanted to share the praise report. Okay, hold on. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. You guys ready for this? You guys ready? Can you guys hear it? Play it loud. Blast it. And we'll beat up the devil for about 20 seconds, okay? This is Tina. Oh, sorry. This is Tina. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I preached about God is our source. You remember that? And I said something. I think it was 11 o'clock service, maybe 9, both of them. I don't know. I said, somebody's in here. They got three jobs. Remember that? And you're considering a fourth one. You're a single mom, and you're going crazy right now. And I prophesied two weeks ago, I said, whoever that is, maybe one or two people, I don't know, maybe online, it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn. The enemy has lied to you saying that you have to work three jobs right now. This is the only way you could provide for your family as a single mom. The devil was lying to Tina saying she don't have an education, so she can't get a better job. See, once you accept the lie, it becomes reality to you. 
It's a lie. It comes from Satan. He's the father of life. But once you speak that lie, once you begin to repeat that lie, it becomes reality. So Tina wasn't buying that lie anymore two weeks ago. She ran to the altar. She was, Pastor, it's me. I'm going crazy. I can't do this no more. I get an hour of sleep. I'm working nonstop, and I still don't have enough. I know God is my source. I've been listening to the lies of the devil, but the lies are stopping here. You told me, or God said, that he could give me one job and give me enough money so I can have time with my kids and come to church. That was 14 days ago. I said, Tina, go see Cityway. We got a team here. We'll, we'll, uh, we got connections at the way. We got, con how do you say connections? Conexiones? Conexiones aquí en el, 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 el camino. Tiene conexiones, hermano. How many of you got connections with God? Take a look at this, man. Blast it. 14 days ago, single mom, three jobs. She finally decided the devil can't lie to me anymore. I'm not going to be under this deception. I could get the best job I've ever had because God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. He owns everything. Get ready to blast it. One, this is Tina, another new best friend of mine. I'm having a bunch of best friends now. Here goes Tina. Pastor Robert, I just wanted to share the praise report with you. So I had a job interview today, and I was only asking for a certain amount. But my God is so good. They offered me $2.50 more on top of what I was asking for, and my health insurance and my 401k would start the same day that I work. And I would only be working three days, 12 hours a day. Did you happen? <laughs> she just went 14 days, three jobs to one. Just had an interview three days ago. Not only working five days a week, the boss says, nah, let's just do three days. You're a single mama. You need time with your kids. And the boss says, you're going to work three days a week. I'll give you overtime in those three days so you'll make enough money like you did in five or six days. Just come in three days. Have four days off with your kids. <laughs> Full benefits on the first day. Give Jesus a big shout of praise. Tell your neighbor, that's the God that I serve. Hey, but you can't accept the lie. As long as that lie sits there, you'll remain in the spirit of poverty. So now Tina, she's not walking with the spirit of poverty. She's walking with grace. The first way the enemy deceives us, he tells us a lie. Here's number two. How does the enemy deceive us? He gets us to question God's word. He gets us to believe a lie, whatever the lie is. My marriage can't turn around. Yes, it can. Who said that? Yes, it can. My kids will never turn around. Y yes, they will. They will turn around in Jesus' name. I've been doing drugs for 30 years. It's too much. I know it's too much, but now with Jesus, it's not too much. Tear down that lie. Now, second. He gets us to question God's word. So again, James is telling, brothers and sisters, don't get deceived on things you're going to face. Don't get deceived on, on troubles you're facing. Don't get deceived. Don't be drawn away. He gets us to question God's word. We see this in Genesis 3, chapter 1. The fall of man. We see this. The devil now begins to talk to Eve. And he begins for her to question the word. He just twists the word just a little bit. How many know as soon as you twist the word a little bit, that's called deception. You leave the word for what it is and what it says. You guys got that. As soon as we get to twist it, the devil will try to twist it just a little bit. It's a little off. And it's off. I was talking to Jehovah Joel, Joel Witness a while back, about a year ago. And I said, you believe, let me go to John 1, 1, just real quick. They could just twist it a little bit. It sounds good, but it's off. She reads this. The, the, I, was, I was talking to Jehovah's Witness, and they read this scripture. He goes, hey, you know, in the beginning, the word already, the word already existed. The word was a God, and, or the word was with God, and the word was a God. You catch that? 
This is a Jehovah Witness. She's telling me, she's reading the scripture. I say, wait, what would you say? <laughs> Can you put up that scripture? I don't have it. I'll put it up or look at it. In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God. Here's the correct reading of the word. Here's the correct reading of the word. In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God. This is correct. And the word was God. When she was talking to me, she put the word was a God. I said, stop right there. That's deception and that's error. She goes, what do you mean? I said, read it again. And I brought out my Bible. I said, my Bible don't have that A. Soon as you put that A, you have took away the deity of Jesus Christ and who he is. And you know what they told me? They got a good one. Oh, our Bible is correct English. Yours is not correct. I said, man, I'm not an English major. I, I, I barely passed. <laughs> but what you're saying is a lie from Lucifer in the pit of hell. Soon as you add that word A, you just took away the deity of who Jesus is and will always be. Because they believe Jesus is just a great teacher, that Jesus was just a great prophet. The enemy, what he'll do, he'll just twist the word just a little bit. He'll begin to question what God's word says. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals. This is Gen Genesis 3.1. The Lord God made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit of any of these trees in the garden? Did God really say that? Of course we may eat from any tree in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we're not allowed to eat, God said. You must not eat it and never touch it. If you do, you will die. Is that what God said? Is that what he said? You're going to die? God didn't mean that. Watch, when you eat it, you're not going to drop dead. Go ahead and eat it. She ate it, she didn't drop dead. What it was, it was death, separation from God. But the enemy tried to have a little, you, you can't have a conversation with the devil. I looked it up again. You guys, we got to get off social media for a while. Average American is spending two to three hours on social media a day. Hey, if you're doing that, I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to make it as a Christian. <laughs> Unless you're listening to preaching all day and Pastor Christian's message on Wednesday all day, you'll make it. <laughs> now we're looking at garbage all day. Again. Oh, look, look how cute this is. Look at this statement. Oh, what if that statement is true? Someone posted something today. They were talking about a pastor. Look at this statement. They said, I don't know if that pastor is true. I had to jump on it. I don't know if it's you. I apologize. Because I'm pretty straight up like James. I said, quit talking about the men and women of God. Don't you dare talk about God's anointed ones. But it was trying to put a thought in my head. The enemy was trying to put a thought. You're not going to really die. Did he really mean that? Come on, give me a break. And Eve got it right, but she continued the conversation. Some of us, we're hanging out. We, we got too many conversations going on with the enemy right now. Too much conversations on social media right now. Too much conversation with friends right now. And we're not spending time with Jesus. And we're wondering why we're getting deceived. Falling for the lies. He'll get us to question God's word. Number three, because of time. How are we deceived? He'll get us isolated. There's Christians right now that are being isolated. I'll just stay home. And there's a time to stay home, but there's a time to come to church. I'm not going to get involved in discipleship. That's why we hung out maybe 10 minutes today telling you, get involved. Get connected. Go to discipleship class. You're not, a, you're not a lone ranger. Go to leadership university. Join up for a power of 12 because the people who are isolated, their lives will be ruined. Their lives will be ruined. I love the scripture in the message version. Jeremiah 44, 7. So the last way the enemy, or another way, it's not the last. Another way how he deceives us, he gets us isolated. Look at Jeremiah 47 or 44, 7. This is the message of God. God of angels' armies, the God of Israel. So why are you ruining your lives by amputating yourselves? <laughs> I love the way the message says it at times. Why 
are you ruining your lives by amputating yourselves? Man, women, child, baby, from the life of Judah, from the place of worship, from the house of God, from discipleship, from servant. Why are you amputating yourself? Why are you isolating yourself? Your life is going to be ruined. Leaving yourselves, look at the last part of scripture. Why are you amputating yourselves, man, woman, child, baby, from the life of Judah? Leaving yourselves isolated and un connected. Isolating ourselves from church leadership and family and mentors, it'll ruin our lives. When we distance ourselves from church and small groups and P12, when we distance ourselves, we will distance ourselves from hearing the truth. Soon as we distance ourselves from church, soon as we distance ourselves from leadership, soon as we distance ourselves from, from P12, from small groups, you're setting yourself up to hear a lie. That's why the Bible, I mean, right now, he's trying to tighten his church up. He's tightening us up because the minute you're, I don't need nobody, I'm cool. I can read my Bible by myself. You ain't the Holy Spirit, Pastor Robert. I don't need church. P12, <laughs> I don't need that. That's for all the weak Christians. I read the Bible. I know how to worship. Be careful. You're starting to fall under the spirit of deception. I need you and you need me. It's the body of Christ. It's a unity in the body. The Bible says don't forsake the fellowship of, of the brethren, Hebrews 10, 25. God urges us in the last days, stay connected. Stay connected to church. Stay connected to small groups. And let us not neglect for meeting together, some people are doing. But encourage one another, especially as the big day draws near. That's the big day, the rapture of Jesus Christ. How many believe we're in the last days right now? We bind right now the spirit of deception over your mind. Some of us, man, we think we're going to heaven. And we're not going. We're not going. The Bible says those who practice sin, those who practice, not those who sin and make a mistake. I make a mistake, right? Those who practice it without repentance, they will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So there's some people, they think they're on the right path. They're far from it. They're far. And the enemy will deceive them. You're okay. Are you really okay? My marriage is okay. Really? Is it? You've been fighting all week long. Right? Wait, wait, let's just slow down. Is it? Are, are you Okay. Because it's easy to come here, right? Hey, what's up? We're doing good. You don't know what I'm going through. I don't know what you're going through. This is the place where we could be honest. The truth will set us free. Knowing the truth, the truth will set us free. Some of us today might have to come to the altar and just confess something. Say, man, I've been doing this. I've been the craziest knucklehead all week long. I need help. My mind is jacked up. It's okay to say that. Instant freedom comes your way. Right? Right? But deception will come. You're okay. You can live how you ever want to live. You're okay. Look at this scripture. This is scary. Oh, Lord, help us, Jesus. Save us all. Save me. Save everybody in this room, God. Glory be to God. Help us, Jesus. Last scripture before we, before we get right. How many, how many of you guys want to get right? Don't you realize that those who do wrong, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't deceive or fool yourself. Those who do wrong, they practice sin, they're not going to, don't fool yourself, don't deceive yourself. And then he gives a list. Well, you want a list? Here's a little list. I'll give you a little list, right? Those who indulge in sexual sin, fornication, adultery, I think it goes on to homosexuality, all sexual sin, sex outside of marriage, married, adultery, sleeping with someone else's man, or another wife, adultery, all sexual sin. Those who worship idols, those, there goes, commit adultery, male prostitutes, homosexuality, um, thief, you like to steal, you're greedy, you're drunkard, you're abusive, right, goes into this list. Those who practice this, none of these will enter the kingdom of God. 
don't leave this building under deception if you're saying man I've been a little deceived I need to get right and some of us we know we're doing wrong we just don't want to let go of it ah man I want to let go of that feels too good if it feels good how could it be right how could it be wrong no and you're right the Bible says pleasure sin is pleasurable for a season oh it's pleasurable it's beautiful for a season Right? If not, people wouldn't get involved in it. It's pleasurable. It's exciting. It's fun. For a season, right? You're in this room today. You guys, let's not deceive ourselves. Man, you could deceive your wife. You could deceive your husband. You could deceive me, Pastor Marco, leaders. But we can't deceive God. When I stand before God, I stand alone. I'm not going to stand with my beautiful wife. Honey, vouch for us. Tell them how good we were, God. Tell them how good we're, Veronica. Tell them. Tell Jesus. Tell them. Tell them how good. Right? I got to stand in front of God. He's going to open up the book. Here's a question. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Pastor, what are you talking about? Lamb's book of life. That sounds like a movie or something. The book of Revelation describes it as this. Give me two minutes and we're done. The Bible describes the, 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 the Lamb's book of life as this. Everyone who gives their life to Jesus, their name gets recorded in the book of life. So if I died, they would open up the book of life and they'd find my name on there. Roberto Antonio Cuencas. That's pretty good in Espanol. Roberto, I can't roll my R's good. Roberto Antonio Cuencas, venga aquí en el cielo. Heaven is yours. Why? I've put my faith in Jesus Christ. I've repented and I've turned away from sin. And I've decided to follow Jesus. So here it goes. I want everyone to stand up. And how many are enjoying the book of James? Isn't this good? Pastor Marco, next week we'll continue. What is that? Verse 17. Every good gift comes from God. Meaning, again, God is our source. Where does the good come from? God is constant. He's consistent. A lot of good stuff. We might have to go first, just one verse at a time because these next three verses, you got to stop because there's too much in there. Now, here we go. You're saying, Pastor, you know what? Man, I've fallen into one area of deception. I know what I need to do. I know I need to get right with God. I know how I'm living. It's not a good example for my children. It's not a good example of a Christian. Man, I, I, I'm almost playing church. I go to church on Sunday, but I just do what I want throughout the week. Man, I need to get right. I've been deceived in this area. I've been deceived in that area. I, I, I got to stop. I want the clarity. I want the truth of what God is telling me. I want to be saved. I want to be a disciple of Jesus. That means a learner. That means a student. I want to be a learner of Jesus. Not a churchgoer. I want to be a disciple. Church, coming to church is great. But now we graduate into a disciple, a learner, and a student of Jesus. If you're in this room, you're saying, Pastor, I want God. I want my name in that book that you mentioned. I need to get right with God. I want God to forgive me of all my sins. Man, I want to make sure if I die today, man, I'm right with God. No playing God, no playing church, no. I'm done. I'm surrendering today. That's me. I want eternal life. I want to follow Jesus with all my heart. I'm done holding back. I want to follow Jesus with everything. That's me. When I count to three, raise your hands all across this auditorium. Online, you can raise your hands. You're at work and you're driving. Pull over. Get ready to raise your hands. Everybody in this auditorium, you're at home, you're at a hospital. This is me. I want Jesus. I want forgiveness. I want to repent. I want to become a disciple. I'm done playing games. I, I'm done. This is me. I want God. If I die today, I'm not sure. I need to get right. That's me. When I count to three, raise your hands like me. One, two. Three, raise your hands right now. Raise them, raise them, keep them up. Keep them up, keep them up, keep them up. I want to see him, see hand there. Keep them up, keep them up. See hand there, see hand there. Keep your hands up, that's me. I want God. I want Jesus. See a couple hands there. See a little hand over there. I see a hand over here, yeah. All those that just raised your hands, even if you didn't raise your hands, I want God. I need to get right with him.
I want to dedicate my life to him. All those who raised your hands, come on down. Meet me in the front. We're going to lead you in a prayer today of salvation to become a disciple of Jesus. Come on down. Come on down. Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. Yes. 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 Even if you didn't raise your hands, come to the front. This is your day of salvation. This is your day. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. You guys are coming up too, ladies? 37, 38. Look at that cute baby. 39 right here. Give Jesus a shout of praise. 39 people. 39 people saying, I want God. I want to become a disciple of Jesus. I'm all in. Here it goes. You guys ready? What are we going to do? I'm going to say a prayer. He's going to say it after me. All those who confess Jesus as Lord, you believe in your heart that Jesus died, he rose again, and you openly confess to the world, hey, I believe in that. I believe in you, Jesus. You are saved. Every head bow, every eyes closed. After this prayer of salvation, then we had another one or two people. One person came up. Another one came up. Give a round of applause. She came up. That's 40, 40 people. After this prayer, 41, 42, two more people came up, 42 people. After we say this prayer, we're going to pray with you. For the ones that need prayer, say, man, I'm going through a lot. Everything was great. Worship was amazing. Word was, I just, I just need some counsel. I need some wisdom. I need a breakthrough. Please, before you leave, just ask one of us. We'd love to pray with you for a minute. Just agree with you. Then you can get on with your day, but get a breakthrough. Get, get, agree with something. We just want, sometimes we're one agreement away from getting a breakthrough. So come up. We'd love to pray with you. Every head bow, every eyes closed. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness. I repent of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. Today I choose to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Jesus set me free. Set me free from all my bad habits, all my wrong thinking. Holy Spirit, fill me. Strengthen me to live for Christ. I thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. And I believe with all my heart on the third day, you rose again to give me eternal life. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm a brand new person today. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Congratulations, all those giving their life to God. You guys, if anybody needs prayer, come on down. We'd love to pray with you. Pastor Marco, he's back next Sunday. Don't miss it. If God is for you, who could come against you? Have a great week. If you need prayer, come on down. Our altar team is here. We'd love to pray with you guys. God bless. We'll see you back Wednesday.